Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be doing a Commander's Review for C20. It's been a while since I've done any Magic the Gathering videos, and I thought, why not just, you know, you know, <laughs> earlier the other day I was checking out Magic News, and I realized that C20 spoilers were all out, and I was like, oh, jeez. Uh, I totally missed it. Um, but, you know, I was like, you know, that's chill. We can just talk about all the commanders in this video, so that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Uh, and let's get straight into it. All right, so for Mono White, we have Mangara the Diplomat, a three and a white for a two, four legendary creature human cleric with lifelink. And he states, whenever opponent attacks with a creature, uh, with creatures, if two or more of those creatures are attacking you or planeswalkers you control, draw a card. And whenever an opponent casts their psychic spell, you should turn draw a card. <laughs> okay, so this card is um, the perfect card for white. And something we have not seen in a while. Uh, this set, in general, has a lot of good white removal cards. It's added. It's got this card, which is very good white card draw. And so, this commander, for only being 4 mana, is a 2-4. Which the four the four body is you know the two four body is fine um, and commander matters less because we you know in commander you have more targeted you know just destroy target creature rather than deal with direct damage uh, but being a pillow fort commander that not only states whenever an opponent attacks you with creatures uh, which is insane um, you know they have to be attacking you obviously but it definitely keeps opponents from attacking you but the next ability that states whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn draw a card oh my gosh i can't even begin to think about this commander and even in a, it's, this is going to be a staple in every white deck i mean people are always going to be attacking in this card um even the attacking part is not the most important part the most important part is that he states whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn imagine a turn a commander besides you know, the first three turns where people aren't casting more than one spell that's just insane. If people go off with count, you know, they cast two spells on their turn, and then they cast two instant speed spells on someone else's turn, you still get to draw for both of those for that player. This commander is going to draw you, like, three cards of rotation of the table. For white, that is insanely powerful. Um, and the reason it's so powerful, well, we've seen a lot of white commanders that draw cards. Like, SRAM is definitely a good example but this commander gives you no other restrictions. You just have to have opponents. <laughs> like, that is so insanely good and an insane commander. I, I'll probably do, I'll probably put him in every white deck I have. I mean, it's just like so powerful and exactly what white needed at this time for a commander. So I definitely think that this was a great move. Next, we're going to talk about the blue commander. And the blue commander is Baron Tolarian Arc. He's one and two blue for a two-two legendary creature human wizard. When Baron Talarian Archmage enters the battlefield, return up to one uh, other target creature or planeswalker to its owner's hand. And at the beginning of your end step, if a permanent was put into your hand from the battlefield this turn, draw a card. This commander's a lot worse. There's not a lot to say about this specific commander. Basically, he says bounce something, and then if you bounced your own thing, you get to draw a card. I've seen a lot of a lot of blue wizard commanders and a lot of good wizard themes that deal with bouncing creatures and getting multiple battlefield effects. This commander fits really well into that. His ability, his second one, is awful. You have to have put the permanent from your battlefield into your hand, so it can't it isn't the permanent left the battlefield this turn. You can't play it in decks that are flickering. It doesn't trigger when something's removed. It just triggers when you put it into your hand. And that is just off like he's the only card in your deck that will trigger this very easily so he's a pretty uh weak commander next let's talk about Karavek the spiteful he's two and two black for a legendary human warlock and he's a three two and he states other creatures get minus one minus one he's not actually a three two he's more like a four three that's better than a four three so he makes everything else have minus one power and toughness, which means he automatically acts like he's a four two or four three when everything else is just the normal thing, uh, their normal toughness and power. But when you account for the fact that he, you know, makes your opponent's creature smaller, 
uh, he's actually pretty huge. Um, as a commander, he's sort of not that... I don't know. As a commander, he really um, can slow down your opponents who are playing aggressive strategies or going wide with tokens because he can, kill, he can just outright kill tokens. So he's a very good card against token strategies, but as a commander, he doesn't seem to have any other special qualities. He has no synergy. I can't think of a card that would want to play this as your commander. You know, I can't think of any synergies he could have. And so, um, another weak commander, I mean, obviously for standard and for limited, he's going to be a beast. But for commander, he's sort of like, eh. Next, let's go on to the green. Where's it red? It's red. <laughs> let's go on to the red commander. And this is Sabira. Tulzadi. Caravaner. Who I hope I said that right. I suck at pronouncing names. Uh, we got, so he's a two, two and a red, or she, sorry, is a two and a red for a two, three legendary human shaman with haste. One mana, one colorless mana, another target creature of power two less can't be blocked this turn. We've seen that effect before. Um, and one and a red tap her to discard your hand. Until end of turn, whenever a creature you control with power two less deals going damage to a player, draw a card. <laughs> A very aggressive commander. I actually really like the design on this. Um, so she is a 2-3 with haste on her own. So she immediately can get into damage. Turn 3 or turn 2 if you have soul ring or something like that. Um, give another. So another target creature power 2 less can't be blocked. So if you have creatures with that less or that power you can hit in. Power 2 or less does not have a lot of overpowered dues. Not a lot. In red you don't have a lot of overpowered attack triggers or deal combos to face triggers. And um, discarding your hand is not actually that much of a downside if you're playing tons of small creatures. And getting the draw cards is insane. I just don't see a reason why you would want to play small creatures um, unless you're playing this commander and this commander doesn't even incentivize you to play small creatures because uh, you, you, know, you have to attack with them. They have to be unblocked and you only get to draw that many cards. Emptying your hand and then having your commander removed once or twice just feels bad in the strategy. If you're in your, you know, you're not gonna have any top ends, so you're not gonna have anything to play um, a lot of the time after turn four or five, and that really sucks for commander. So this, although I really like the design, she feels very weak as a commander, and with just how commander works and the even just the meta game right now is very um, opposed to having a commander with like this. Let's move on, and next we have Joel Rail. Um, Malvoli Recluse. I'm not even gonna try to say that. Oh, geez. Oh, uh, one in a green for one, two legendary human druid. She states that whenever you would draw your second card each turn, create a two, two green cat token, and four and two green until end of turn creatures you control have power and toughness X slash XX, where X is the number of cards in your hand. I love this commander. Um, I love the design. A green commander that wants you to draw cards benefits you by creating tokens and having those tokens be able to get huge when you're going to draw cards. Oh, that's so insane. Um, drawing the cards might be the only struggle you have. There's a lot of great ways to do this with cards like Garuk and other cards like Grish Cards Expertise where you have a big creature and you draw a ton of cards. Um, in general, I like the design. It might be hard to get the card draw you need, um, but we have a lot of commander products coming out. We have a lot of good ways, uh, decent ways already, so I think this commander is set up to succeed as a green commander, uh, sort of breaking the color pie. We have Gadrak, the Crown Scourge. Two in a red for a 5-4 flying legendary dragon. Uh, when he deals combat damage. Can't attack unless you control four more artifacts at the beginning of your end step. Create a treasure token for each non-token creature. Or, yeah, non-token creature that died this turn. I love artifacts. Um, a three mana five, five, four dragon. Um, that should have been named Smog. <laughs> I, uh, there's so many dragons, and oh, quite a few of them, not many legendary dragons, though, deal with artifacts. And this is so... Cool, and we have so many uh, dragon and artifact synergies that could work really well with this commander. The thing that I like him about him most is that at the beginning of your end step, you create a treasure for each non-token creature that died this turn. So, if someone board wipes, or if you board wipe and then play him, you get a ton of treasures. I'm not sure how you would abuse the treasures. Um, 
I just can't think of a lot of ways to abuse them, but this commander is has a very cool design, and I definitely think that there's a cool deck for him. I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to think about that. In general, um, getting the creatures to die is your only real struggle, I think, and the rest of it will just work by itself. All right, so next we have Veto, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. Two and a black for a 1-3 legendary vampire cleric. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life, and creatures you control gain life link until end of turn for three and two black. So the creature you control gain life link ability is eh, but the fact that he goes infinite with another card um, is insane. So he deals damage to an opponent whenever you gain life. Whenever you gain life, or whenever your opponent dealt damage damage, you would gain that much life from Exquisite Bond or something or uh, something like that. Um, so he is an infinite combo, a oh, one card infinite combo. So definitely see him being a competitive EDH for sure. Being a casual commander, I think he's going to go in a lot of decks rather than be a commander. A vampire commander that wants you to gain, uh, wants you to gain life is not nothing new. And in that sense, he's pretty weak. The next is an Azorius. So one in a white for a 2-1 uh, human cleric, um, and her name, <laughs> I didn't even start the name, is Nyambi, esteemed speaker. So she has flash, and whenever and when she enters the battlefield, you may turn another target creature you control to its owner's hand. If you do, gain life equal to, number, to that creature's converted mana cost. And one, and an Azorius, to tap her, discard a legendary card, and to draw two cards. So, if you're playing legendary tribal, Tribal, she lets you discard that card to draw two if you don't need it in the situation. I think that's a pretty cool draw card effect. The legendary text itself is kind of weak as the legendary tribal cards are mostly um, Abzan. We've seen a lot of commanders uh, that do this sort of legendary thing better with the graveyard and things, but I do love the ability where she gets to return target creature control to its owner's hand and you gain that much life, uh, but she just seems worse than a lot of the other uh, Azorius and Mono Blue bounce commanders that we've seen. There's a lot of commanders that can do what she does way better, and um, she just doesn't seem that original or new. Well, on that note, let's get on to the next one, which is Rada, Heart of Keld. One, and I go guard for a 3-3 legendary elf warrior. As long as it is your turn, she has first strike. You may look at the top card of your library at any time, and you may play lands from the top of your library. Whew. And she gets plus X plus S until end of turn, where X is the number of lands you control for four and a gold guard. So that buff ability is actually insanely good. And she has a huge, and like a huge body when you activate the ability, and so she has to be blocked. She puts a lot of pressure on your opponent for sure. And the fact that she allows you to play lands off the top of your library, we've seen this effect before for sure, but she is a strictly better copy of that card. Uh, whatever his name is, I have awful memory. <laughs> she is so good and does a crap ton of work. So the next one is a pretty, pretty chill, pretty, pretty chill uh, commander. So it's Rin and Sari, inseparable. One, a red, a green, and a white. For a legendary creature, dog cat. <laughs> dog cat. 4-4 uh, four, four body, whenever you cast a dog spell, create a 1-1 one, one green cat creature token, and whenever you cast a cat spell, creature spell, or no, just, just a cat spell, create a 1-1 one, one white dog creature token, and for a 1, or sorry, for a red, green, and a white, you can tap them, and it deals damage to target, to any target equal to the number of dogs you control, and you gain life equal to the number of cats you control. So, a very cool dog and cat tribal. I like the token synergies a lot. You have a lot of good dog synergies and a lot of good cat synergies. So this is gonna be one of those commanders that is split. You can play either one when you go to tribal synergies. Um, if you're playing cards like a coat of arms, uh, it affects both cats and dogs. So you're gonna give each you know, pumps equal to the number of cats or dogs you control. But if you're playing a card that says you have to name a creature, you have to choose based on what you have in hand. And actually, whenever you cast a dog spell, create a cat. It means that if you have a ton of cats in your hand, you're also going to have a ton of 1-1 one -one dogs on board. You just know that. And this commander does that dual tribal synergy really well. And I really like the design of this commander. So that's going to be it for this video. Let me know what you guys thought about all these commanders. Let me know if you have any you like. In the comments, leave links to your deck list for these commanders. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.